to mention that Graham Bell's here. Yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't seen him before, yeah. you're in for a treat. If you've seen him before, you know just how good he is. Absolutely fantastic. Great, great songwriter. Graham Bell. Thanks for asking me to come. I've had a, a wonderful weekend at the Marlborough Gathering yesterday. To be here today is, uh, is marvellous. Um, I travelled here with Sam. We came from Morpeth and um, so we came through South East Northumberland and it always makes me sad, that part of the world, because my grandfather and my great grandfather, they, they farmed that land before all the roundabouts and the factories and the new towns and all the concrete. and. Um, I know from the stories that I've heard them tell how, the amount of pride that there was in the people, the, the farmers and the farm workers that farmed that land and the care that they put in and the love that they put into it with, with the horses and, and with the animals that they worked with. Um, so I'm going to sing a song called The Threshing Day and my granddad used to talk about The Threshing Day. He was born in 1905 and um, so he remembered the, the steam threshing engines that would travel from farm to farm in the winter time of course in the days before combine harvesters and um, the corn was made into sheaves in the field that collected the sheaves and they made corn ricks and they were beautifully constructed uh, to keep the weather out and thatch and uh, you know the wonderful feature of the countryside and in the winter time um, when, the, when the field work had finished um, that was part of the winter work was, was to thresh the corn to separate the grain from the straw and the chaff and um, <coughs> it would be all hands on deck the contractor would come with his, with his steam engine and his threshing machine and uh, everybody would rally round the neighbours would come and it was a social occasion, you can imagine people didn't get out. So all the neighbouring farms, all the neighbouring farmers, they all got together, farmers' wives, children, and it was a social thing as much as anything. So this, uh, this has got a chorus, you'll pick it up. And most of you will know the tune, because um, I've pinched it from the Weshing Day. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's a bit of plagiarism. When one frosty morn, when I was young, I heard me father say, Rouse yourselves, the engines, yeah, cause it's the threshing day. Me little heart, it skipped a beat, a bainy school a day. For every hand required to help upon the threshing day. The folks came out from round about for to join the fray. Good neighbours all to lend a hand upon the threshing day. There was brawny lads and seasoned men, boisterous bands at play, and the women folk to feed the crow upon the threshing day. Chug, chug, thump, thump, pitch the sheaves away. All the one neighbours and wassails upon the threshing day. The engine built to heed a steam, the thresher sprang to life. With belts and chains and pulley wheels, those never seen the like. In the diffin and in the dust did fly upon that winter's morn. The great machine to separate the straw and chop for a corn. Chug, chug, thump, thump, pitch the sheaves away. All of our neighbours and wassails upon the threshing day. At the bagging end, where the grain came out, there stood some burly chaps to carry fully sixteen stone up the granary steps. Os bairns were gathered heaps of chaff and bagged it into sacks, pretending we two hundred weights a corn upon our backs. Chug, chug, thump, thump, pitch the sheaves away. All of our neighbours and ourselves upon the threshing day. At twelve o'clock the work had stopped. 
the women folk appeared, with steam and belly cans at tea and jugs of foam and beer. There was gitly pies and girdle scones, apples rosy red, sausage rolls and home cured ham to have upon your bread. Chug, chug, thump, thump, pitch the sheaves away. All our neighbours and ourselves upon the threshing day. And when we reached the final wreck, it was surrounded by the cats. And terrier dogs and men with sticks to murder all the rats. There were shouts and shrieks and barks and squeaks. Good sport was had by all. And at the end, for score and ten, was tallied on the wall. Chug, chug, thump, thump, pitch the sheets away. All of our neighbours and ourselves upon the threshing day. By late afternoon the work was done and folks was gone away. They'd laboured hard, the crack was good, the mood was bright and gay. But I was glum till father said, though needn't feel dismay. For oh, next week it is the neighbour's turn. There'll be another threshing day. Chug, chug, thump, thump, pitch the sheaves away. All of our neighbours and wassels are on the threshing day. So yes, they were, they were involved in farming, but um, by shortly into the turn of the last century, they had to go down the pit because there was more money down the pit. And they had big families. My granddad was one of 12. He was the eldest <coughs> of 12. So they ended up going down the pit. But he always he always wanted to, get, to go to the hirings and get hired on the farm. He, when he left school in 1919, that's what he wanted to do, but he, he had to go down the pit. Um, and I left school in 1974, and uh, my daddy was an electrician, and we lived on a, on a, on a, a nice um, newly built estate in Morbeth. Um, didn't live in a back to back or anything like that. You know, I had a comfortable upbringing, but when I was coming to leave school I decided I'd like to go on the farm so that's what I did so I went out and I got a job I was green as grass I took a job a place called Capitan in Northumberland and most of you never heard of it a little dot on the map in the middle of nowhere and it, um, the whole village was owned by this guy Major Brown Swinburne and it was very much you know Duffy kept to the to the Lord and um, I worked on the home farm and it, it was a very steep learning curve but I, I really threw myself into it and I, I took to it and I loved the, the livestock part of it. I loved working with the cattle and the sheep and I had, I had other kinds of <coughs> livestock there. And I had to learn, I had to learn a new language really because these folks spoke a bit differently to, that I did been brought up in Morpeth and um, there was a lot of uh, terms that were new to me and how you you spoke to the cattle, how you communicated to the stock. So we had different calls for different uh, classes of livestock. So in Northumberland, if you want your cows to come in, don't say this in Cheshire, but in Northumberland, we shout, huff, wolf, huff, wolf, to bring the cows in. Did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> And the sheep, we used to shout for the for the tubs when we were feeding the tubs corn at the trough. We'd shout, Billy, 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 the tubs would come. <coughs> so this, this song, I'm singing this song for Rosie, actually, because I attempted to sing this song at Rothbury. We were all at Rothbury last, last year, Adam and Rosie and myself. And um, I was going to do this song in the, in the competition, and I got... Partway through, I lost the words, and you know what you know what it's like. And when it goes, with me, when it's gone, it's gone, and there was no coming back. 
and that was the competition in the afternoon in the church and then uh, we were all participating in the concert in the mart we got all we get all the big gigs Rothbury Mart <laughs> <laughs> which was fantastic was and um, you know the guy what's he called Ropey you, you know the guy yeah. Oh, yeah. he was MC and um, so he'd been he'd been judging the competition in the afternoon and he introduced me and I mean the the they were fantastic, weren't the dancers and the, the musicians? I mean, they were world class. There was some Andy May, there was, you know, some incredible. So I was, I was pretty, don't normally get nervous, but I was pretty bloody nervous. So this ropey, he introduces me, there's 400 people in this mart. And he says, This is Graham Bell. He forgot his words this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> that was my big intro. <laughs> But I, I managed, didn't I? I managed to do this one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this one for you, Rosie, Thank if you. I can uh, remember. It's called Bill Billy. How does it start? <laughs> How does it end? Well, that's what Rosie wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, 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 Billy, I plead to bring the tops to the trow for to cool down the heat. Bill, 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 Billy, I'd schooled. I was no but a lad, only sixteen years old. Off, 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 at the first light of dawn. Dolly and Daisy, how ye in for your corn? Off, 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 I would call. Ye step into the byre to the round milking stall. Chuk, 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 to the chickens I cried. They replied. <laughs> chuk, 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 as I hide the feed down, the pecked and the scratched in the dust on the ground. So, 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 so we had shoot, and the old soul come running from the furrow in foot. So, 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 as I slopped the swill out, she squealed with delight as she dipped in her snoot. The dog had command. She was trained to the whistle or the wave of me hand. She'd set off a way by. She was eager to work and she lived by me side. Now a bonny young lassie came by the farm gate. Bill, 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 Billy, I felt compelled to be late, but she carried on past with her nose in the air. I tried a hoof off, but she seemed not to care. <laughs> chuck, 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 I desperately cried. She glanced over her shoulder with contempt in her eyes. So, 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 I cried with dismay, for it had no effect, she was getting away. <laughs> I shrilly appealed, but it set the dog off, and it snapped at her heels. It torn her own, she loped into me arms. I was bamboozled, bewildered. Quite frankly alarmed. <laughs> she said, I'm no cow, nor a hen sheep or swine. Then she placed her red ruby lips right next to mine. <laughs> now it's been 40 years since that very first kiss, and we are still together in marital place. <laughs> I think I'm
I'm going to do a poem now. No, I've got the top man in the corner there, but I'm, I'm going to dare to do a poem. And I did this. I, I, I go to a poetry night up at, um, near Warrington, and I'm a fraud, really, because a lot of the stuff, it's, it's me song lyrics, me and the poems. But I've, I have written a couple of poems that I would call poems, and this is... This is my poem. I'm very proud of this poem because this poem's about my, about my education or lack of it. It's called Secondary Modern. My secondary education was secondary modern, second rate, second best. All of us there failed our eleven plus test, and modern, not really. In fact, it was quite rough. I mean, I've never heard of a secondary modern, it was posh. That was the bright kids that went up to the grammar, learned how to talk properly without accent or stammer, learned Latin and physics and other such things to become doctors and lawyers and bankers and preachers. And you never know, some of them might have turned out to be teachers, to teach lads like me. Woodwork and metal work, to get used to the tools, to aspire to apprenticeships when we'd left school. And the lasses, they got needlework, learned how to darn well and mend, and in science domestic, how to cook for our men. And we do need butchers and bakers and candlestick makers and brickies and sparkies and, yes, undertakers. And a simple, basic education was just fine for the factory, the shipyard, the farm, or the mine. But as a child, I was stifled by the low expectation of that inferior tier of state education. And so now, sometimes, looking back, I wonder what I might have done. I could have been a journalist, wrote for the more of Herald, the Daily Star of the Sun. Because I think I'm quite good with words. And if you've got a heart, I think I can move it. And what's more, I've got a grade two CSE, English, certificate to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I did have it more with them. The two people came to me and I've done it. I did it at Hebron when I did me standing, and I've, whenever I've done it, and I, somebody's come and said how much they loved it, invariably the teachers. <laughs> and there was a guy came last night, he says, I got a grade four CSA English. Yeah. He says, and I've, I've got a Bachelor of Science. He says, so. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need English for science, though. <laughs> 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 you probably need better than a grade four CS. Yes. <laughs> this, is, this is a new one. I'm, I love to do this. I hope I can remember the words because it's a new one. Um, but I, um, so nearly everything that I write is, is based in the northeast, whether it's through uh, farming or through uh, industry, you know, the geography of the area. Um, and I was born in Newcastle, so I'm a, I'm a bona fide Geordie. But I grew up in Northumberland, um, so I claim dual citizenship. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually um, mixed cultural heritage because my me, me mum's from Shieldfield, but my dad was from Cotter. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this song's called bona fide Geordie. It's not, it's not quite autobiographical, but uh, I'll be yes, gleaned a lot of the stuff from uh, you'll, you'll recognise it. It's, I would describe it as um, Bobby Thompson meets Chaz and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bona fide Geordie. I was born in the tomb. Me father celebrated with a crate in Yuki Broon. Me mother was ecstatic. Me granddad got palatic. Girl the Don Scots would rode in a little garret attic. Now might they shared an outside netty, but still I had that pride. They were all from Kenside. 
When I was four months old, I'm solid food I'd take. It wasn't barley's rusks, but milk soaked stubby cake. My granny'd make a pan of broth by boiling our sheep's heed. She died at 97 of mad ovine disease. When I was a bit older, I drank tizer and juice soda with six pennies worth of chips or a canny bag of tudor. Crisps manufactured on the coast road in beef dripping the were fried. I was raised on time inside. And my father had an allergy that kept him short of cash. When confronted with employment, he would break out in a rash. <laughs> ah, the first game I remember, it was hide and seek. We played it with the rent man on a Friday every week. <laughs> my mother was a clippy on a yellow trolley bus. She was a lippy clippy, but she never bothered us. Up and down the west road on that trolley bus were dried. I was raised on time side. I was badly educated at my secondary school. Second grade, second best, the teachers they were cruel. By using corporal punishment, they kept us in control. They taught us how to write me name and sign on to the door. <laughs> but I was good at writing sick notes, they never knew I'd sky. I was raised on time side. Oh, my family were religious. They took it right to heart. They worshipped on a Saturday at St. James's Park. I was stood there in the leasers in me ball boots and braces, chanting up the tune and singing blading races. And when Sunderland won the cup, where well, y'all contemplated suicide, <laughs> I was raised on time side. No, I met a lass from Gosforth, her family up a class. They kept the cools inside a cool house instead of in the bath. <laughs> she wore expensive perfume made in London or in Paris. At the bingo should not shoot out hoose but mid-Victorian terrace. <laughs> then she left us for a lad in work and I broke down and cried. I was for leaving. Thank side. The father said get out it and get yourself down south. The weather's warm, there's plenty jobs, I'm telling you the truth. I got a bus from Gallagher, feeling like a fool. It took us all the way down soup to the place called Hartlepool. <laughs> <laughs> Why the natives talk peculiar, I was in a bonny plight. The weather was nae warmer and that football team was shite. <laughs> I stuck it for a fortnight, just to show I tried, then I came back to... Tyneside, no contemporary Tyneside, there's been a lot of change, there's posh restaurants on the quayside and culture at the, at the, at the sage. <laughs> on match day in the tune, it's nothing like is rowdy, we're sat there on my horses and the club's owned by the Saudis. But one thing never changes, and that's what Geordie pride, cos we were raised on. Science. Science. Are we the <laughs> I should do a serious one. Not in the, um, one of the uh, well, yes, um, one of the first songs I wrote, um, which I entered for the Northumberland. First time I entered the songwriting, and I, I won with this song. It's called. Um, Geordie was a miner. Geordie was a miner. He filled the tubs with coal. They sent it down the wagon way to the steads at Newcastle. They took the coal to make the coke. They burnt the coke to smelt the steel, they rolled the steel to build the ships, they filled the ships with goods to trade, the goods from coal and steel were made, the trade it made the nation great. Cause Geordie was a miner, Geordie was a miner, they called him out on strike. Money goaded offer, though I spoiling for a fight. The picket line, a great divide where brothers fought and mothers cried. Buttons raised, police attacked, bones were broke and skulls were cracked. The scabs got through, the strike was broke, they lost the fight and lost the hope. 
in Jordi was a miner. Oh, Jordi's not a miner, he fills no tubs with coal. He's got pneumoconiosis, and he's in a nursing home. They dig no coal, they make no steel, no turning of the winding wheel, no need for heavy industry, the factory hall, the foundry, money's made on trading screens by men in suits on bonus schemes, trading goods from foreign lands, an economy built on banks of sand. Now, Geordie's not a miner. called Action Man Deserter. <laughs> and you remember Action Man, don't you? With his little scar and his little rubber boots. And... Everybody wanted an Action Man when I was at school. But not everybody got a one because um, he was considered considered very pansified sissy for a, for a boy to get a, a doll, you know, it wasn't on. Um, a bit different and that would be considered too macho, wouldn't he, with his little plastic gun. So, um, yeah, Action Man Deserter. I, I, it was a throwaway line. A guy, a guy, a guy brought a stylophone to a fortnight in, in, in Middlewich in Cheshire. And we got on talking about um, stylophones and spirographs and, and Action Man. And he, he made this throwaway line about this Action Man Deserter. So that's what's inspired the song. December 1968, I was ten years old. Dad said, what do you want for your Christmas box? Why, I was feeling bold. I said, what I want is an action man. Like Billy and Bob and Davy, you can dress him up or dress him down. For the Army or the Navy, me dad was a big tough welder. At Swan Hunters on the town, he said there'll be no dolls comes in this house for any son of mine. I said, all I want is an action man with a scar on his cheek and his little rubber boots. Is that too much to ask for? Me mum went to the cabinet and got a catalogue from Kays. She handed me that big thick book and I studied it for days. There was spirographs and stylophones and so put your table football. She said, take your tiny bonny lad, pick anything you want at all. I said, all I want is an action man with a scar on his cheek and his little rubber boots and a dog tag on. Is that too much to ask for? Me nana took us to the tomb. We went into Fenwick's grotto. I was sat on the knee of a big fat man who smelled of brown ale and tobacco. <laughs> he said, what do you want for Christmas, son? You can whisper in me ear. Yeah. I looked them square in his saddled eyes. I said, I'll make it very clear. <laughs> what I want is an action man with a scar on his cheek, in his little rubber boots, and a dog tag on, and bendy legs. Is that too much to ask for? I took myself to Gospath High Street and went in the Boydell shop. I was searching for an action man. But the assistant made a stop. She said, it's little Jimmy Broom. And I am mother well. What do you doing down here on your own? You're going to have to tell. I said, <laughs> all I want is an action man with a scar on his cheek and his little rubber boots and a dog tag on and bendy legs and a flat jacket. Is that too much to ask for? On Christmas Eve, I went to bed. 
And I close my eyes shut tight. I pressed my palms together. And I prayed with all me might. I said, Jesus, can you hear me? Would you answer all me prayers? If I tell to you what I want to say when I get down the stairs. Cause all I want is an action man with a scar on his cheek and his little rubber boot and his dog tag on and his bendy leg and his black jacket and his car he kicks. <laughs> is that too much to ask for? On Christmas morn I crept downstairs. And I saw that Santa bean. There was a stocking full of nuts and sweets, an apple and a tangerine. There was a spirograph and a stylophone, and two subbutio teams. But when I find me heart's desire, the object of me dreams, there was a beano book and a Guinness book. By Norris and Ross McGuire, <laughs> but best of a lot was an empty box with a note on top that said, Action Man Dessert. <laughs> well, I knew I would get one if I just kept harping on about it. I've just got to find the little bugger there. <laughs> Billy, Bob, Davy, me Action Man's gone AWOL. Get up a search party. I stopped a Bobby in the street. I said, Hey, mister, can you help us? I've lost me, me soldier. He said, I son, he says, can you give us a description? He said, <laughs> he's an action man with a scar on his cheek and little rubber boots and a dog tag on and bendy legs and a flat jacket and car he kicks. Mind, he's something of a sugar. And when he's found, I'll lock him in the pound. Cause he's an action man deserter. When he's found, I'll lock him in the pound. Cause he's an action man deserter. Thank you very much. I know the lad who's running this. I'm sure we can squeeze just one quick one out as well. Yay. Come on. Quick one. What do you sing on the way down? I'll, no, I'll, this is very quick, and, and, I, and I've sent this to Harry and Bridget. It's a poem, and I did it last night, and it's very, very, it's very, very quick. Do you remember it? No. Go on. Blanco, blanco. <laughs> Three schoolboys in the playground, <laughs> arguing over speed. The eldest sets the bidding off. He thinks he's got the lead. He said, my dad, he's the fastest. In his racing car, 200 miles an hour, he's the fastest dad by far. Pa, pipes up the second boy, my dad's faster yet. He flies at twice the speed of sound in his supersonic jet. Wait, that's no, says little Jordan. My dad's a council roadman, see. He finishes work at five o'clock. He's in the house in half past three. <laughs> <laughs> He is a force of nature, and the other thing is, he hasn't been so well recently. And uh, I kept sort of writing to him and saying, "How are you doing, Darth?" Because his, his voice was coming out the bottom of his boots. He's been absolutely fantastic. One more time, Graham Bell.